All right, guys. So we're going to now look at the three models that we've made along these lessons. Um, and we're going to determine all the factors, um, all the factors that contribute to the severity of the storms. And we're going to use each of the models um, to discuss prompts. Um, unfortunately, fortunately, um, it's just me. Um, so I'm going to come back through um, and look at our different um, models that we've created along the way, kind of talk through them thinking about um, these questions. So the first one we're going to look at is the models that we made at the end of chapter one. And we're going to look at how did the addition of the lake affect the amount of rain and the rainstorms. And so what I did here in um, the most confusing way possible is I color coded the difference between storm one and storm two. Storm one is in um, red and um, it has um, it was before the lake. So if we look at storm one, OK, if we look at storm one here, OK, um, storm one, we had a water vapor of low, we had a, um, a temperature of high, and we're talking about the air parcel. Um, the surrounding air had a low temperature. And here we had, um, we had little amount um, of water that would become the vapor that would um, become our cloud, which would then follow us, right? As a result, the liquid water we had um, in storm one was fairly low, right? Um, the air parcel itself will transfer its energy to that surrounding air. It's really hard to do with a highlighting tool. Um, and um, once, once it um, reaches equilibrium, it is um, going to stop rising and it's gonna fall as rain. And you'll notice that my cloud is a lot smaller and it has a, only a little bit of rain. All right, so then they put in the lake. And so now we've got storm two, all right? And so storm two had had high water vapor and had a high temperature. So notice that the temperature was the same um, for both of these storms. So we were really looking at the effect of water vapor. Um, and that water vapor came from having a larger um, amount of water that could come into the clouds. Um, the temperatures stay the same for both um, of the surrounding air. And what ended up happening is we had a much bigger cloud with a lot more rain. And we noticed that the liquid water that happened was high. So coming back over here, how did the addition of the lake affect the amount of rain in the rainstorms? By having um, more water available um, to become water vapor, we would have more water vapor within the air parcel, that which would give us um, more, um, which would give us more rain. Okay, so moving on to um, chapter two, which is how did the differences in temperature affect the amount of rain in the rainstorms. So again, did my color coding um, storm two, I did with the purple and um, storm three, I did kind of with the bluish purple. So storm two was after we put the lake in, okay? So because we had put the lake in, we, we had high water vapor for both of the storms two and three. Um, the difference is we looked at how temperature um, affected our air parcel. Um, and so here we had we had a high amount of temperature here, which gave us um, some energy change, which put us in this middle box here. So our air parcel only got to that middle section when it had high temperature change. Now in storm three, we had very high, which gave us a much larger um, energy transfer and our parcel actually got a lot higher. And because it had higher, it got higher, that liquid water also got higher. So we were looking at how putting the lake in made the storm sort more severe, but that didn't explain the difference between two and three. So by having this high, this hot, very high parcel temperature, which transferred its energy um, as it rose, we got to a higher level in the troposphere, which gave us a bigger storm. 
So that then led us to chapter three. And in chapter three, okay, how did wind affect the amount of rain in the rainstorm? And so when I look here, okay, um, we did this one. Storm four was in the um, red and storm three was in the blue. And so when I look, the difference, the main difference here, okay, is our wind, right? Those were the things that I actually changed and wrote in the differences for. When I had the wind, um, so storm four had bigger winds, had heavier, stronger winds um, than storm three. As a result, um, here we had storm four, and I'm just gonna put S4. And then here, whoop, we had S3. So our parcel didn't raise as high in storm three because those winds weren't pushing it up. Um, but in storm four, because we had such strong winds, they were able to push that, that parcel even higher, um, which gave us even um, more rainfall, which was a more severe storm. Okay, so all of the models show factors that are, that are part of causing storms. Can you have a storm if just one of these factors is happening? Why or why not? Could Galetown have severe storms without all of these factors? Can we have storm if just one of these factors is happening? Well, we got to think about that for a second. So we saw that storms happened um, when we had different changes along the way. And really what we want to think about with these is that, um, sorry, my apologies, um, that those different combinations of those factors are going to give us different storms. So if one of those factors is happening, then yes, it can most definitely happen. However, um, it's a combination of those, um, those things that end up getting us the storm that we know. So we're going to prepare to write a final argument about Galetown. So the addition of the lake caused the Galetown, I'm sorry, caused Galetown to have more severe, is that supported by evidence? We have evidence that it has that. Um, warmer weather caused Galetown to have more severe storms. We've got evidence that proves that. And then stronger winds, we definitely have evidence that supports that. So that leads us to activity number four, which is our homework.